Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 Hasu League game, potentially game three. It wasn't labeled game three, but I believe it's game three between Jiraiya and Raj. I think that game just maybe got mislabeled. But, and this is fun colors. Bottom right hand corner, we got Jiraiya starting as the purple Zerg. Upper left hand corner, we got Raj starting as the gray Protoss. This is, of course, on Neo Sylphid. Natural expansion down here. Gap, mineral only. And so, <coughs> game one, game two, this is going to be at cross positions. Jiraiya, let's see if he opens up with a nine pool once again. If he opts for an over pool or something a little bit more economical, the nine pool speed proving devastating in game one. Excellent play, honestly. Overlord making its way top right currently. Raj dropping an in-base pylon. I wonder if he's going to go for one base play here or a two gate opener. Unfortunately, if he opens up two gate, this is at cross position which makes it a little bit harder to execute. One base play has thrown a lot of Zerg players off. Although Jiraiya, honestly, he might be more comfortable playing against a two gate opener because in comparison to other Zerg, one, one V one player Zergs oftentimes on the ladder end up facing the two gate less often. But when you're a two V two player, two gate is what you're up against the vast majority of the time. So Raj dropped the 10 gate. We'll see if we see another one on 12. In the meantime, it looks like Jirai is utilizing resources to go for a 11 hatchery off his nine workers. Now 11. Plopping down. And are we going to see a second gateway? We are seeing a second gateway on the 12th supply. So two gateway opener. Raj scouting bottom left hand first. This is up against two hatcheries. So this could be an opportunity for Raj to wreak a lot of havoc. But part of the problem is... For Raj, this is cross positions, which means it's the longest distance those elves need to travel to make this happen. He should be able to scout, and I think he's going to like the fact that it's a 12th hatchery, but not the fact that it's at cross position. In the meantime, Jiraiya sending out just now a drone scout, the probe making its way into the base. This might put him on high alert, seeing this probe come in a little bit earlier than usual. Let's see if he saves Larva to build Zerglings. So Zerglings are sucking colonies tend to be the important thing. Right now, no larva being saved. Actually, this is about the moment when you want to see that larva saving up to get the six zerglings in construction. But in the meantime, we got one zealot out and two more on the way. And we'll see if Raj just goes all in with this or if he's just going to try to get those initial three zealots, apply pressure with that, and then roll back. And unfortunately for Dry, depending on the timing of this... Okay, so pylon down at the natural expansion... Is Raj just going to hold with the three zealot? That's another interesting question. Okay, because he delayed actually with that three zealot, there's an opportunity maybe for this drone to see them as they're coming across. Yes, yeah, sees the three zealots now incoming. And that is the full alert that in fact isn't a two gate. Got initial zerglings built there. He's canceling the gas immediately. Nice response. Needs to get a something colony or some additional defense or some additional zerglings out to defend this. So he's got six Zerglings down. There's the creep colony behind the additional hatchery. The drone trying to blockade to buy time. A little bit of a supply cap right this second. Kind of common. So that Sutton colony going to be along the way. Six Zerglings actually might be wise if the six Zerglings move out a little bit. But again, this the cross positions really, really hurting Raj. Raj may be wanting to do the counter thing and get the, Zer the Zealot run by. In the meantime, he's getting his... He is grabbing his natural expansion behind this and dropping a forge on the low ground. The Zerglings, noticing it's just three Zealots, thinking the Sutton Colony will be plenty to defend, going for an end around, and there's been a third base drop here at the three o'clock location. So the Zerglings now trying to defend the Zealots that is in range to provide a little bit of support for the wandering and some additional zerglings being constructed across the field a cannon getting dropped a second cannon getting dropped but these zerglings actually might end up on top of that cannon so the two zealots are going to be necessary to get out of position and defend in the meantime the zealot getting onto the drone line but a solid defense from jiraiya and it looks like once again the zerglings able to get in the main with three numbers they're not going to have zergling speed this time however so jiraiya once again able to be annoying sees the two gateways and he's got a whole lot of Zerglings actually here, so <coughs> I believe the probe saw the large number. So Dry actually taking a larger economic hit here in the early game than usual. Mm, lost a Zergling, it looks like, to that Zealot. 
So less of a threat right this second. Zealot attacking the gateway to let it know who's boss. You better get working again, gateway. But this is a massive amount of Zerglings making the way to the natural. And I don't think this is going to get anything accomplished with those two cannons. So Jiraiya potentially expending... Well, never mind. Not a full block. So scrambling. Redirecting. The Zealot going a little bit too far. Raj able to reposition. But Raj... As things settle, not that bad that bad in a position economically, but Jiraiya actually did a pretty solid defense, didn't lo lose a lot of workers, and it looks like he's going to be able to follow up and get the scout and see that it is three base lair. <coughs> Potentially, Zergling speed just getting upgraded. Probe going to find that three o'clock base and see the saturation there. I don't think this is going to transition into... I'm wondering if this is just going to be three hatch mutilisk from here. So that's been spotted. Second, yeah, second gas getting grabbed. I think this is going to turn into three hatch mutilisk for Jiraiya. Especially seeing the cannon dedication and the two gate. Maybe he's counting on a, a delay. So there's the cybernetics core. He's counting on a little bit of delays. Otherwise, four zealots marching their way out. Fourth hatchery now at the three o'clock. So never mind. It looks like it's four hatcheries regardless. And Aspire. Right now, the zealots have not been spotted. And this, this could do a lot of damage here at the three o'clock. The zerglings able to take care of that probe. They are out on the field, but the Zealots might get a lot done here. Let's see what they target. Want to target those drones first. Some, so one drone down, two drones down, the rest scattering. They might be able to power down this hatchery. Three more Zealots marching out as well. So this could be a dead base. The drone's trying to come back and drill now. Actually, a pretty decent drill across the initial Zealots, but it's not interrupting them massively. But again, Jiraiya, actually a pretty solid defense. He's, though he did lose a good number of drones in the midst of this. More Zealots making their way across. So Jiraiya is not out of the woods yet. And some of the Zerglings not participating in this fight. So he needs to build another grouping. And he's going to have more interruption of his economy here at the 3 o'clock. And that could... Honestly, if there's a focus fire from Raj on that hatchery, that should be a dead hatchery. And that should be what he should focus on right this second. Cancelled hatchery right there. Jiraiya pulling out. And so now it's going to be two bases. But one thing for Jiraiya. So he loses this hatchery at the 3 o'clock. But he's banked a lot of resources. And we got six Mutalisks taking the air. And there's looks like a second Stargate getting dropped. And only a single Corsair up in the air. So Jiraiya could swing this rapidly. If he can get the Mutalisks up into the main to the natural. If Raj can hold, however, he should win through the long term. Another base being dropped by Jiraiya here at the 6 o'clock. Another aspect of 2v2 players is they're pretty good at doing some of the on-the-fly jazz recovery sort of mechanisms. So, because they have to do that quite often. Six Mutalisks in flight. The Zealots have not spotted it. We do have the Sutton Colony to repel these two Zealots. It looks like the Mutalisks are drawing back to wipe out these Zealots. So the Zealots are taken care of, but man, they did a lot of damage. Photon Cannon defensively at the natural. A second one there as well. There's only a single Corsair and two cannons. Never mind, now two Corsairs in between. Do we have Scourge? We have some Scourge. So it's going to come down to some micro from Jiraiya if he can position to make this happen. Another, a couple pylons being dropped in the background as well. The Mutalisks moving in. The Scourge a little bit delayed. And not the best micro here from Jiraiya. Scourge also not able to land on the Corsair. So Raj, able to hold, has the supply lead he's looking for. It has the economic lead he's looking for. Two additional hatcheries building here at the 6 o'clock. And Jiraiya has been greatly, greatly delayed. And if these Corsair end up in the air in large numbers, right now Jiraiya, I don't think he wins the air game. Doesn't even need... Although he does have armor upgrading and plus one weapons is not that far. Zealot leg speed is going to be complete. The Zealots do need the Corsairs to provide some screening for him. But off the double Stargate, he can get to that six count very, very rapidly. It looks like he's already pinned a probe here in the background to allow those Corsairs to micro away. So he's got that six Corsair count, which is what he's looking for. He's got a Dark Templar in place as well. I don't know that Jiraiya's <coughs> going to have sufficient defend uh, uh, sufficient enough anything to defend this overlord he's also got two sacrificial overlords and those would supply block him he's down 20 workers 
just now getting a Hydral's Den, dropping another Sunken Colony, trying to shell up. But eight Corsairs now moving out alongside a Dark Templar. At six o'clock location. Honestly, I don't think that is... I don't think this Overlord's going to be sufficient with the Sunken Colony. Two Overlords making the way up the... The Mutalus should get shredded. But plus one armor will be there in between, and that could be a big factor here. So... Big air fleet now for Jiraiya. Jiraiya delaying. He's lost his overlords. That Dark Templar a little bit delayed. The Mulisks engaging now. I believe that armor is going to upgrade in the midst of this. The Corsair is backing up briefly. Another overlord spawned. And that Dark Templar is moving out right as the Corsair is not in position. So it gets wiped out. So big missed opportunity there from Raj. And armor completes. That was a huge investment in Corsairs. And he still hasn't killed... Uh, the other latent overlord here to the 12 o'clock. So in the tech transition, Jiraiya actually able to stymie the counterattack. He's up to... It looks like he's back up to six. He's down a good amount of supply, but this was a big investment in Corsair that hasn't turned into anything for Raj. Now the Zelt's starting to fan out. So we'll see in... Take two of this battle if the Mutalisks are able to defend. They're going to have to pull double duty of dealing with the Corsair and the Zealots. Pretty good SimCity at the natural here. Overlord's getting pecked away at. The Zealot's going to reposition. So the Corsair is going to go towards the natural while the Zealots careen into the 6 o'clock. We got two Lurkers and no detection, however, at the 6 o'clock. So these Lurkers need to burrow and that should provide the defense here. They're not burrowing, however, because Jirai is distracted. Now they're burrowing. And again, looks like no drones have been wiped out. And again, the Corsair is just not providing sufficient defense. And so now this is going to be dead zealots on retreat as they've been separated from the Corsairs. That plus one arm and Jirai has swung right back into this, going plus two armor now with the Mutalus. He has firm air control, which shocks me against the double Stargate. Well played from Jiraiya. And some probes out in the field going to get wiped out. <coughs> they were, I presume, rallied out here. So going to try to grab that 12 o'clock. This is just a wing and a prayer here. 12 o'clock base for Raj. I don't think he can hold it with just these two Corsair against this Mutalisk fleet. So he's just hoping that doesn't get scouted. But secondary problems for him is, is now Jiraiya has the worker lead. He has the supply lead. And he can grab additional bases if he wants to. And he's queued up a bunch of overlords just in case. He's transitioning into, it looks like Hydra Lurk a bit. He's got a Queen's Nest down and is going to make his way towards the next stage of the game. If Raj can hold this, get this up and re resupply a bit, he will be in a position where he can play towards the later stages, but he does need to main, remain highly vigilant against this Mutalisk fleet because they can swing in and batter down the main potentially or a lot else, and part of the problem for Raj right now is, is he needs to continue to invest in Corsairs, really, because of the air problem, or he needed Dark Templar with the Maelstrom or some amazing side storms to mitigate this Mutalisk threat, and right now I don't think he has anything to really stop the air control of Jiraiya. Seven Corsairs right here, but a full control group with soon-to-be plus two armor, and I expect on that plus two armor spike, Jiraiya gonna move out. One Mutalisk getting caught a little bit mid position <coughs> see if they swing back out and thing is is even if they just dive in ignore the corsairs they can pick off these high templar and that will be again again big catastrophic losses raj looking to re-grab that mineral only it looks like drag grabbing that mineral only as well more mutilus being built Jiraiya recognizing air superiority right this second all the headaches that'll cause and he's at a very, very healthy worker count as well. Has not made his way towards Hive, however. A couple lurkers scrambling about. Looks like he is going to go ahead and move up to the 3 o'clock to grab an additional gas. And the Mutalisks, once again in flight, we have just a wall of cannons here at the 12 o'clock to try to defend that latently. That does allow Raj to be a little bit more aggressive with that army across the map. So Jiraiya now doing what he did in game two, macroing everywhere. So, or game one, I should say. <coughs> Gonna grab the bottom left-hand corner as well as the three o'clock. Couple of Mutalists getting caught, but that should be forewarning that those Mutal those Corsairs need to get back to home base. 
So it looks like some probes going to get wiped out. These cannons should get wiped out. Recognizing there's not a lot of probes here. The Mulus drawing back now working on cannons. The Corsair is wiping out a split Mutalisk attack force. The Mutalisk repositioning and now drawing. Keep in mind this is plus two carapace. Versus these Corsairs. So the Corsair is getting wiped out because they're not fighting over the cannon lines. Some Dragoons trying to engage. A little bit of a trouble microing on both ends it looks like. Jiraiya going to pull back now with that Mutalisk. Force a lot of them getting wiped out. Some Dragoons on the low ground. With plus two weapons, able to wipe out. <coughs> Good composition here now for Jir for Raj. Even in supply. And he's at a tender position for Jiraiya, where he's expanded to the 3 o'clock and bottom left. Mulus moving up, going to find that cannon wall at the 12 o'clock. And so now Jiraiya doesn't have much of a ground army, or air army either, to repel this army. Let's see. It's going to be an uphill battle. Pretty decent upgrades, however. No armor upgrade. A bit of a whiff of a side storm, and that hit a lot of the Corsair as well. Scourge able to pick off one of them. Few drones dying to that. The Corsairs, sorry, the Mutalists making their way back. They need to pick off those High Templar, although the side storm's already been expended. And Jiraiya actually folding back, maybe sacrificing this mineral only to buy time to re macro and defend and mitigate losses. So Hydros now re-engaging against Dragoons, which is usually a pretty favorable fight for the Hydros. Raj recognizing he doesn't have any support in the form of High Templar or anything else. So going to go ahead and back up with the rest of that army. He has managed to cap four bases, but that bottom left is up and it looks like it's starting to just now saturate the three clocks up. I think a Zealot has discovered that. And the Hydros pushing in and Jiraiya with a sliver of a supply lead. I don't know that he's going to be able to turn this into a contain, but the Corsair is starting to get active to provide some of that scouting information. They, they've halted, though, and not discovered that 12 o'clock. We have some Hydralisks pressing up to that 12 o'clock. We'll see if some Defilers... Do we Are we at Hive Tech? We are at Hive Tech. No Defiler Mound that I've seen out on the map as of yet. But Defiler Tech, again, could be a problem. We've got an inverted Lurker Egg at position to create some frustration for defenses, suggesting that there might have been an attack up the secondary ramp. But I think Jiraiya is doing that to be annoying more than anything. And provide some time and food for thought for Raj. Raj repositioning. Lurker not burrowed. And kind of side storm bait. So he's going to back up from the rest of this. Raj with a 10 supply lead. The Corsairs are going to find bottom left with a Nidus Canal just completing. And he's storming down now. But he's got a critical Hydralisk army in between that might be able to pancake... Both attack forces, so Raja looks like upon detecting that is going to reposition. He might throw everything bottom left, but it might be a base for a base, potentially, where Jiraiya sac sacks bottom left, potentially, to take out the 12 o'clock, although it's still literally an uphill battle for him at that location. And I don't see anything yet. Yeah, looks like he's not going to bother dropping anything through the Nidus Canal. just going to let that happen. Picking off the High Templar that are lagging behind the army, and now moving up all the Hydralisks up to the high ground. Does he have drop? No, he does not have drop in the space of this. Just trying to absorb some of those cannon shots. Unfortunately, it looks like Jiraiya does not have enough to wipe out that 12 o'clock base. But he did have enough to go ahead and press into that mineral only. So attacking two locations, he's going to reposition the Hydralisks. He's already lost bottom left. He's wiped out a good amount of the workers here at the mineral only. And he's now trying to focus fire down that nexus to make sure it's a base for a base trade, which would put Jiraiya in a or Raj in a dangerous position here economically, because once again, his mains mined out, his naturals mined out, he's only running off the 12 o'clock base. Or immediately redropping the Nexus and now distance mining. In the meantime, Jiraiya's still got a lot of resources in the bank across the field. He's down supply, however, and I think Raj recognizes with that last base wipe, he needs to get aggressive. So starting to storm a lot of troops out, if he can wipe out that 3 o'clock, that would do a lot for him. Unfortunately, the Observer having trouble getting in position to deal with some Lurkers. The rest of the armor army now moving up, but you can see Jiraiya already staging up for a pincer attack. So he's got a few Zerglings coming in from the south. He's gathering a lot of the troops. Never mind, those are just Overlords. Thought he was staging up for a counterattack. So instead, trying to draw the attack forces top right, eating some side storm. But Raj doesn't need to be attacking these Hydralisks right here. What he needs to be doing is wiping out some of these bases. 
However, Jiraiya's supply is dwindling in the midst of this, and right now Raj is storming top right as though there's a base there and there's nothing there. So he finds nothing, and that was a delay, and that delay is giving Jiraiya time to rebuild that supply, that supply gap now closing. And if these had come just a little bit earlier with that observer, this might have been a breach 3 o'clock, that could have been a breached mineral only as well. So a huge misstep from Raj right there, and that I don't know that that's going to cost him the game, but if the game does go in Jiraiya's favor, that'll be the moment to cycle back to where if there was an attack at the 3 o'clock location or the mineral only, this could have been a swing in momentum. And instead, Dry has managed to capture and reduce that supply gap <coughs> and mount a defense force to potentially engage this uh, plague. Not there, but we are going to have Dark Swarm potentially. That will, but man, a lot of Psy Storm over the edge. Unfortunately, it's mostly hitting Lurker eggs, which are just being canceled from Jiraiya. Supplies plummeting on both ends. A lot of Lurkers behind this, and I believe there's there is an Observer towards the rear of the army. But unfortunately, Raj getting repelled, which is again giving Jiraiya more time with that strong economy to rebuild the defense force. The Observer hanging out right on top of it. Fortunately for Raj, that didn't get picked off, but Raj not able to penetrate Jiraiya's defenses on any location. Instead, expending a lot of his army, he staged up to grab the 9 o'clock, but yet hasn't yet grabbed that 9 o'clock base. He has managed to reestablish that mineral only, but that still puts him two bases versus effectively five. And with Jiraiya, with a large latent ground army now, can start thinking about grabbing territory for himself. He can think about maybe going bottom left. We do have a High Templar hanging out here. Or he can go ahead and grab top right. <laughs> In the meantime, also there's the problem for Raj, where he needs to defend at the 9 o'clock and the 12 o'clock. And we have Dark Swarm, as well as Plague, if a Defiler gets into the forward positions. A little bit of a Lurker exchange. The Observer not there, so some free damage. The Observer now in position to go for a pretty decent spread. The Zerglings charging forward, not quite able to take out the High Templar. Dark Swarm getting dropped, but those are Zealots and Archons. And the Defiler looking for a Plague opportunity. It looks like Jiraiya, yeah, going to apply pressure. He's also expanding behind this, and so doing a fantastic job of pinning Raj back while he's expanding. Looks like he's going to send another drone to go ahead and grab the Mineral only here bottom left as well. So threatening... A Plague Defiler at the 12 o'clock, which is a base that Raj absolutely needs to defend. A plague mostly hitting the Archons there. Which do not mind it. Just kind of catch up for them. With all of that shield. But it is going to be a minute before Jiraiya's economy kicks up again. And right now, Raj has managed to close that gap. 9 o'clock base is up. See if he can get some workers saturating there. Raj repositioning. Looking to assault... Another base, now that there's been a pressure relief mid-map, it looks like some Zealots are giving forewarning, however. Raj still looking for an opportunity, <coughs> maybe to clip into that 6 o'clock or attack that mineral only. Bunch of units top right provide a bit of defense. Unfortunately for Raj, attacking uphill again without the Observer along the forward line, but these are very bunch lurkers to eat some side storm. There's a lot of lurkers all over the place, though, and I don't see an observer anywhere. I think the observer... Okay, there's the observer. But Raj just getting annihilated with that, and all of a sudden down 30 supply. Kind of a lurker flank on both ends. Jiraiya's base top right is now activated. Bottom left as well. Needs to get that saturated. Raj down 20 supply and needs to get some, needs to either slow Jiraiya down or establish some additional territory for himself. It looks like he's trying to position bottom left. I don't see a worker here migrating. It looks like we do see some workers migrating towards the 9 o'clock. High Templar looking to storm. Creep, double creep colony getting dropped. So rather than trying to establish bottom left, it looks like he wants to take a shot at the mineral only potentially. <laughs> expended a little bit of size storm in that effort. More reinforcements making their way across for Jiraiya. More lurkers being wiped out. Looks like the observers slowly making their way forward. Top right up, we have a Nidus Canal here as well. That should be a good reposition point for the drones at the main and the natural. All of a sudden, 
We got five bases, but not quite saturated for Jiraiya. So there is a lull in his economic output, which I think puts ba basically at three to four, which is a good situation for Raj. But he needs to be able to capitalize on it. Hydralisks mid-map not finding anything. <coughs> Raj's army repositioning towards top right. We do have some lurkers out there. Jiraiya checking bottom left, seeing nothing. I'm wondering if this is going to precipitate a base race where maybe Raj starts trying to engage top right at the 3 o'clock and a counterattack moving in for Jiraiya at the 9 o'clock with that army latently there. So yeah, now cross position Raj engaging maybe towards the mineral only. Dark Swarm, so this is probably going to be a dead base. It looks like Raj is re-engaging to maybe try to defend this base at the 9 o'clock. Some lurkers having some trouble getting up the ramp. Nice pylon wall, that's why. Nice pylon wall behind this from Raj. So I think he's going to be able to save this 9 o'clock. And wipe out a few troops. Both players getting close to the 200 resource mark. We have a robotics facility in here potentially to build some reavers on spot. Archon's able to get that splash damage underneath the swarm. It's still very, very slow get anything accomplished, and Jiraiya utilizing the opportunity to try to grab bottom left, which is ambitious considering there's such a large standing army. Now moving into the mineral only down below. Lurker is right there. Jiraiya trying to re-hotkey the troops. I don't think they're going to be in time, so this is potentially going to be a dead base here bottom left. The Zerglings now running in. The High Templar have a lot of Sidestorm to work with as well, and there's a lot of High Templar here. Lurkers bunched up. Looks like they are Maybe Psystorm bait. That hatchery is gone. Supply count still even, however. Dry a little bit behind in the upgrade battle. Where he's, still, he's at 2-2 versus 3-1. But he does have that Adrenal upgrade finished to equalize things with those Zergler, Zerglings in between. Ro, uh, Raj losing the bulk of his army. Still has a massive army camped out at the 9 o'clock. <laughs> drone finding that zealot at the natural is going to go ahead and collapse right there we also have a hidden high templar a sneaky high templar there on the low ground as that natural being re-grabbed and right now so raj pinned in the bottom left if he gets some amazing trades over the long haul he might be able to win this economically but right now jiraiya has a massive bank he's got a lot of hatcheries up he's got all of the map except the upper left quadrant So it's up to Raj to pile forward and wipe out some of Jiraiya's holdings. And he's got to do so and get some really nice trades while that's happening, which means some brilliant size storms on top of everything else. Also, level 3 Flyer Carapace upgrading, so we might see a rapid tech switch. I don't think we are we have a Greater Spire. So it might just be for Mutalisks to assault some of these bases. Yeah, Raj looking to see if he can get any he, it's a very precarious situation for him he is getting some shuttles maybe to do some dark templar drops in the background that be another sneaky way we have a couple zerglings in open field i don't know that 12 o'clock is a, a it's starting to thin out so i don't know that's the best target for the defiler swarm anymore but nine o'clock could be a tender position the mineral only nearly gone for raj and jiraiya also taking top right so really raj needs to clear out either top right or bottom left and then establish those bases for himself and do so with some decent trades, which is a, a difficult challenge. Able to clear out some lurkers mid-map without too much trouble right there. A Dark Templar is going to find its way top right, but immediately get wiped out. Does manage to get a Hydralis kill, but not a lot else. Some more zealots storming top right, maybe to just kill this hatchery on the low ground. It looks like the Hydralis are going to go ahead and move forward and engage. A couple Zerglings trying to trail in and do what they can. They're forcing some sty storms out, but not able to accomplish a lot else. And this army has been softened up via plague. It looks like the Zelts have been cleared out top right as well. And Raj's army starting to dwindle, steadily dropping further and further supply. Trying to refill. Both players getting close to that return to 200 mark. But again, the problem right now is Jiraiya's expanded bottom left. He's expanded top right. And that's three quarters of the map to work with versus Raj's one to one remaining healthy base at the nine o'clock and the soon to be expended base at the 12 o'clock. 
And Raj has yet to evict. Might have missed a drop here. Has yet to evict any troops, any of these bases to establish them for themselves. And the longer he waits, the more resources are going to be taken out of these locations as well. More lurkers grouping up top right. It looks like Raj maybe going to go for a push that direction. A lot of troops here are pinned bottom left. Good plague at the forward position. We also have a shuttle alongside with the Reaver to protect those Reavers in between. The Dark Templar are getting expended. Dryat slowly pressing forward. I'm not seeing any Scourge to deal with the Reavers, so the Reavers slowly walking forward, wiping out the Lurker lines. Getting a lot of damage, so gonna slow push here top right. More Plague across everything there. But Raj really going about this slowly, partially because he needs to, to be economically effective, but this is also giving Jiraiya time to, he's got resources to spare to again, to rebuild and throw a lot at this. So instead of doing a quick sweeping crush, this is allowing Jiraiya to mount slow pecking defenses. And I'm almost looking for it. Yeah, we are seeing some Mutalisks now being constructed. I was looking for that Mutalisk swap to pick out some of these troops at the... So right now, Raj holding, but this is giving an opportunity for Jiraiya to maybe sweep in. I will say he's getting some fantastic value out of all this. The Scourge, not able to pick off the Observer. They're not able to get the shuttle as well. This is honestly precisely what Raj needs to do, except he needs to maintain the troops, which is just allow Jiraiya to toss stuff at him and obliterate it. Instead, he's going to grab this mineral only. Yeah, he's wiping out lurkers. He's really expensive and not taking a lot of losses as well. So looking quite when dropping a lot of side storm. If he can cap it, though, by wiping out top right, that would be the bonus. <coughs> it's starting to move in with that shuttle. More Dark Swarm and Jiraiya just getting walked back. Dark Swarm dropping. It's not really going to help out. And this is exactly what he needs. Some Zergling sweeping in from behind. Drawing some of the troops back. But it looks like that mineral, or sorry, that natural expansion is going to get wiped out. Raider Spire completing, however, in the midst of this. So there are Mutalisks up here. It looks like some troops have generated top right. Shuttle going to move forward and Psy Storm top right. So Dry actually taking considerable losses is well behind Raj as far as the supply count. Some Zerglings have been able to sneak in between, though, and pick off some Dragoons in No Man's Land. But taking some, it looks like the shuttle's been wiped out, but taking some solid economic hits. However, we got a lot of Guardians morphing near that 9 o'clock to wipe that out, potentially. We also have Ultralisk upgrades in between. So dry happy to go ahead and take bottom left, especially on a delayed upper right-hand base take from Raj. In fact, Raj, honestly, as soon as this creep is cleared, should take this base immediately. And f We'll see if he... I don't know that there's any Corsair left. And there's no High Templar currently at the 9 o'clock. <coughs> so these Guardians could wipe out that 9 o'clock. Lurker is creating some havoc, but Raj slowly able to walk up. I don't see a worker here quite yet to wipe things out. Nine o'clock base getting wailed on, but Raj moving up top right. The Observer has that range upgrade, so able to see the edge. Trying to work on the Nidus Canal, but getting a little bit distracted. So Nidus is now down, but it looks like Jiraiya was happy to sack this to go ahead and wipe out the nine o'clock and clear out everything else. And it looks like Jiraiya has now swept back into a supply lead. With the nine o'clock gone, the 12 o'clock gone, Raj is, he doesn't have workers right now at the mineral only, so he's not mining. 400 of the resources needed to be dropped on a base there at the natural. So, he, so Raj maybe just moved too slow here in taking additional territory. We have a high Templar dropping a side storm. Pretty quick reaction there from Jiraiya to move out of it. So it looks like he is gonna be able to wipe out the nine o'clock. Some Zerglings able to sneak in to the mineral only, and now Jiraiya just starting to swarm across, and Raj cannot build any additional troops. Because if he builds additional troops, he's getting dangerously below the mark where he can drop additional Nexus to continue mining. So at this stage, it looks like Jiraiya is going to be the victor and will advance into the semifinal. Yeah, Guardian now joining the action top right. So with that base gone, the 9 o'clock base out, it is... It would take a keyboard explosion or some other problems for Jiraiya to, to falter this. I think Raj just expending it, recognizing it's the final game. At half the supply of Jiraiya. 
And Jiraiya just with some solid smothering macro here, I gotta say, in game one, game three. We got an interesting semifinal. Got ranged out there, we got Herbmon, <coughs> we got Jiraiya. Zazu should be a good one. Waiting for the GG in the midst of this. Corsair flooding in, they want to get that revenge kill on these overlords. Feels good. It's like, okay, you took out my bases, but at least the ones, the, the guilty parties will perish. So there's some justice, right? Nine o'clock base completely swept. Regrab at the mineral only. It looks like there is a guardian still attacking some probes at that location. But yeah, right now, Jiraiya is just, just fantastically saturated, has a massive bank to work with. More mules being generated to maybe engage the Corsair, which, and he's just slowly walking in. More probes are walking out to the 9 o'clock. As this is still contested area. But the Zergling sweeping across and just wiping out everything in between. Yeah, I think this is a... Uh... Yeah, there's GG from Raj. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give a like and subscribe if you are on YouTube and willing to throw the sacrifice to the... Uh... Algorithm God. Yeah, if there were... If there was a heart attack from Jiraiya because of the gluttony, the sheer gluttony. I agree, Piano. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for listening.